We come to Matthew 15, we find in verse number 8 a portion of scripture that I memorized years ago. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I find it to be so. I find it to be the case. He says to them, he says, verse 7, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah the prophet, or Isaiah prophesied to you, saying, These people draw a nine with their mouth and honor them their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain and they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth that defileth him. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But, yeah, yeah, I, I, that's pretty obvious. I'd be offended if you told me, You draw a knife with your mouth, and honor with your lips, and your heart far from me. Yeah. You worship me in vain. Now, that, would be, that would kind of offend me if I was in the Pharisees. But so, yeah, he did this. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both of them shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding. Father, I pray you help us to honor thee and worship thee both in spirit and in truth. That we learn of thee. That we magnify Christ in our lives. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I've got some titles that I would like to title this message. And uh, maybe you'll never hear the titles again probably throughout the message. But one of the titles is, A Healthy Heart Makes a Happy Home. And we'll find that these people draw an iron from their mouth and arm with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So they go through the routines, they go through the rituals, but they do not have a heart for God. A healthy heart makes a happy home. And then the other message thought I was thinking of was, don't die in a ditch. Don't die in a ditch. I mean, I, I, I ought to get so many big time preachers and write titles for their messages. Everybody would want to hear me get a message like, don't die, because he said that they're blind leaders of the blind. They'll both fall in a ditch. And the uh, truth of the matter is, that is two, two truths that we need to understand. A healthy heart will make a happy home. If your heart is healthy, your home can become happy. But if your heart's not healthy, oh my, my, my. And you can always get in a ditch over here because the blind are going to try to lead you to a ditch. I think about that, and I, before I get into the message, I think about that as years ago when I drove trucks for Schneider National Carriers. And uh, as I was driving, there was three of us left around Effingham, Illinois. And we were headed down to West Memphis, Arkansas. Actually, I was probably headed to Millington, Tennessee, which is just outside of Memphis. But uh, we were driving down the road, and we were talking to each other on CB radio. And as we got down to Cairo, Illinois, uh, we're getting foggier and foggier. Everything from Marion on down 57 is getting foggy, and it's getting more foggy. You get to Cairo, you've got the Ohio River and the Mississippi River, they run together right down in that area right there. And so you got the rivers right there. It's dark outside and the fog is thick. And I cannot remember whether I was the second person or the third person. It's like there was three or four of us driving down the road from Schneider and where I'm talking, we're talking on the CB radios. And, and I finally hollered at the guy in the front and I said, please, whatever you do, do not run off the road. I can just barely see your tail lights, and I think I'm right up on your bumper or on your trailer. And I said, so please don't run off the road, because if you do, 
Schneider will lose at least three trucks. <laughs> because I am going right where you go. Blind leaders of the blind. He couldn't hardly see in front of him. Didn't know where. He was just trying his best to see what he could see. And if it went off, it'll let me off. I'm just trying to get you to understand that it happens all the time. But I got to thinking on this thing and on a, this heart thing and, and this whole thing here. And, and, and I'm thinking about the, the mind drift from the spiritual heart, which is our inner man, our soul, our uh, spirit as they mingle together and, and work together. My mind went from there to the to where our attitudes and actions are settled to uh, in, which we find that in chapter 15, verse number 19. And that's, that's what he's talking about, what's in the heart. And then to the physical heart, where the life of the flesh flows from. You know, blood is pumped from our heart. And if your heart's not healthy, then blood flow is hindered. And uh, uh, an unhealthy heart brings issues to the whole body. If your heart's not working right, the blood doesn't flow right. If the blood doesn't flow right, the body doesn't work right. You become lethargic. You look, even though you're not lazy, you look lazy because of lethargy. Lethargy. You become lethargic. You become where you're weak and worn out, even though you haven't done hardly anything. When the blood is not flowing correctly, and what happens is your your family, everything gets a, a starts worrying, and you're not there. They're saying, "Oh, what's going on? Is it his heart? If it's his heart, what's going to happen?" Worry. And you know, worry does not bring happiness. A healthy heart is controlled. A heart that's in control, it's, it's not skipping beats, it's not losing beats, it's not losing time, and it's uh, no arrhythmia, it's no, none of this is not overpowering or, or underpowering. You're not got high blood pressure, low blood pressure, it's not doing too much, too little, it's working just right. And let me say, everybody, if your heart's working right, and everybody knows your heart's working right, everything's just happy to get, hey, listen, uh, everything's great, but when they start worrying about the heart, you know what happens? Stress starts building up. It's affects, there's worry, there's stress, there's frustrations. What can we do? How are we going to fix this? All these things come up, and it makes you an uneasiness. Can I say that's true not only in the physical realm, but that is true in the spiritual realm. Now, the physical side, it's important to eat right and exercise. Because garbage in brings garbage out. What you put in, they say you are what you eat. And so if you're eating all kinds of Fats and uh, and uh, carbohydrates and all kinds of sugars and stuff. You might be fat and sweet, but can I tell you, you are what you eat. You're not healthy. I'm not putting that. I'm not. I'm not. Matter of fact, I'm not even preaching on what you eat in your exercise. You need to eat and exercise. That's a physical truth. But only that's physical truth. But on the spiritual side, we have a different problem. Because our heart is naturally not healthy. Our heart is naturally deceitful above all things and desperately right. wicked. Mm -hmm. It's not what goes into our bodies that is going to mess up our heart. It's what is already in us that messes us up. We try to teach people, be careful of eyes what you see and you ought to. Be careful of ears what you hear and you ought to. I mean, but the problem is not that that messes up your heart. Your heart's already messed up. It is the seed above all things and desperately wicked already. He did not say Worry about what you put in. He tells us in verse number 19, worry about what comes out. For out of the heart see the evil thoughts. Murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witnesses, and blasphemies. 
He didn't say, hey, if you put blasphemies in all of a sudden, you're going to have blasphemies come out. Hey, you're going to have fornications come out of your heart if you put fornications in. He didn't say that. Because that's not the case. You were born with a deformed, defiled heart. You do not have to teach a child to lie. You do not have to teach a child to cry when it wants out of selfishness. Not just because his diaper's dirty, not just because it's hungry, he, he or she, it, it, but because they just do it because they want attention. You don't have to teach them that. All right, natural heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. The natural heart is spiritual on the spiritual side, not the physical side. It's desperate. Our, our natural heart is far from God. It says this people draw a nine meter mountain on and live with our heart is far from me. It's full of fornications and foolishness. Now I didn't say that to begrudge you from taking care of your physical. But to be honest with you about the spiritual. The physical, no man yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished. Nobody physically does not want to take care of themselves and make themselves better. They might not do it, and they may have got themselves addicted to something because they were they're, because they decided they were going to play around and said, oh, I've got time. This isn't going to hurt me a little bit. It's not going to hurt. And they get themselves all messed up. And they might catch these diseases or something. But it's not that they are hating their body. They want to fix it. That's why they take medications. That's why they start exercising. That's why they start eating right. They want to make themselves healthy because nobody wants the effects of what sin brings. But there is pleasure in sin. So physically, but spiritually, we already start on the other side. We've already got a problem. We are a man. So let me just join with the scribes and Pharisees, and I always preach against them. But hey, wash your hands before you eat. It's a good thing. Jesus was not saying don't wash your hands before you eat. Don't eat with dirty hands if you got some place to wash. But don't let that be the focus of your life. I mean, eat right. Be healthy. Worry about your physical heart. But remember this. Bodily exercise profited little. But God is his profitable unto all things, having a promise of life that now he is in that which is to come. 1 Timothy 4 8. I say this bodily exercise does profit. For those who say it's no profit in bodily exercise, it doesn't say that. It says it profits a little. But it doesn't do anything for your eternal, it doesn't do anything for your spiritual. And our spiritual is a whole lot more important than our physical. And we need to worry more, concern more about our spiritual than our physical. Jesus wasn't against hygiene. He's for healthy. Uh, he's for health. And, and, and our spiritual health is so much more important than our physical. I mean, you can drink poison. You can eat, or you can take up serpents. You can eat with unwashed hands and not worry about it in the will of God. But Christ taught us in the book of Matthew chapter 4, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't play games with it. That's a physical thing. Life's not a game or a gamble. It's, it, 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 it's, it, 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 it's, it is, it's, uh, it's, dep it's dependent upon our wisdom and our work. I mean, it's just, it's just not, well, this is going to happen, it's going to happen. Well, I was born in a family that has high cholesterol. I was born in a family 
that diabetes. I've got was born in a family that had these things are going cancer or whatever. I was born in a family, so therefore I'm probably going to get it. You don't have to live like that. I'm telling you, you can enjoy the Lord and enjoy life. You can stop some of these things and prevent some of these things. I didn't say it's not going to happen, but it's not something that you say, well, it's all going to happen, it doesn't matter, I'm going to live. I, I say it all the time, I'm going to live till I die. But I don't say that in the realm of I'm just going to go out there and, and live in a lascivious lifestyle. Or licentious. I'm not, no, I'm saying, listen, there's nothing I can do, there's something going to happen, I will die. But I do not get into it, I do not. I don't, you don't do foolish things. I mean, if there's a road you don't know and a car you're not used to, you don't get out there going down the road at 95 miles an hour, not watching the signs, talking on your phone, and so forth and so on. You don't do that. Why? Because you don't, you don't live loose. You don't play games with sin. You don't play games with foolishness. Wisdom. I even teach my son, stretch, stretch, stretch. You're going to get out there and run. I teach my daughter, stretch out. Don't, don't get out there and start running. You'll tear something up. Even though you're young and your body's limber and stuff, please don't think you can just go out there and run and exercise without. That's on a physical realm. The truth is even more so on a spiritual truth. Life's not a game of change where you don't have any say about it. You don't just become Superman, muscular, because you say, it's just going to happen or not happen. Some people might have that kind of DNA, but most don't. The truth of the matter is, you're responsible. Now, but on the spiritual side, I want to look at three things and get done with our message. I want to look at man's natural condition, man's normal traditions, and man's needed transition. We'll find that in this portion of Scripture. A healthy heart makes a happy home. And don't die in a ditch. Boy, boy, boy. Don't die in a ditch. Don't get so caught up on one thing that you miss the main thing. There are so many who are out there so focused. Now, I'm dealing with this on the physical that they miss the spiritual. They think there's folks focused on financial. And they say, it'll be all right if I get my finances right. And they miss out on the spiritual. And then there's, so, there's some that are so focused on trying to look spiritual that they miss out on the physical. And so they try to look spiritual. And so they do this to look spiritual. They'll give away this to look spiritual. They'll do this other thing to look spiritual. None of which God has talked to them personally about doing but it's what somebody else did. Brother Stacy Pearson and me went to a prayer meeting years ago. And I heard people talking about fasting 30, 40 days. And this man said he won't be fasting this long. This man said he fasted this long. And boy, I said, I want to do that. And I started doing it. And the longest I'd ever gotten, I think I went six days on a full fast. I may have hurt my heart by doing it because I did not even take any water. But I thought I was being spiritual. And God, thank God, God is gracious. Because I could have hurt myself 
a lot earlier in life. It might, I might have effects from it. I don't know. I remember fasting one time with a man who wanted to save his marriage. And I'm over fasting and praying, asking God to do a work because God for marriage. And uh, he, and he, this man comes in to me. This man is a young Christian and he, he dips up and drank off and exercised all the time. He was a Marine. A day without PT, that's exercise physical training like a day without sunshine, he used to say. But he comes in to, and we got talking, said, how's your fast going? We're about three or four days into this fasting. He said, well, I drink a cup of coffee every morning. I said, well, okay. He said, and, and you know, he said, I know I told the Lord I wouldn't be dipping any snuff, but he said, I, I, I still take a couple of dips every morning. I scratched my head. I said, your marriage is not worth giving up snuff for. And I'm starving? Four or five months later, Ed's wedding. At a church down the road. Big Creek. It was a Big Creek Baptist. He done. Forced his wife. Found somebody else. See what happened? He wanted to sound spiritual, but spirituality called. Oh. He wanted to save his marriage, but wasn't one of the two to save his marriage. Now, I'm not preaching against him. I'm just trying to tell you, we, sometimes we try to be spiritual. Now, there's times I fasted just because I wanted to, I, I, without a burden on my heart, without a burden, and just say, well, I'm going to fast. I'm not against it, but you need to learn how to do it if you're going to do that. You need to ask God. God, the reason I'm fasting is I don't want to have a burden. I want a burden. God, I want to do it. The reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm reading through my Bible this next week or next month, and, and I just want to spend my whole time just reading and took off work to read or something like that. It's not because I'm trying to make myself more spiritual. I just want, I just know that I need more of you. Unless God tells you to do it. I ain't even got no message. We got man's natural condition, man's normal tradition. And a man needed to transition. Man is a mess. We just already said this and I'll say it again. Hearts deceptive, deceitful and desperately wicked, and we don't even know it. Jeremiah 17, 9 does. Don't follow your heart. You were born with an old heart that is deceitful and desperately wicked. You were not made in the image of God after His likeness. You were made in the image of your Father and after His likeness. You were made as Seth was made. The Bible tells us Adam. That Adam was made. And in God's image and made him in the likeness of God. Genesis 5, 1 tells us in the likeness of God. And Adam sinned and filed his likeness to fi and therefore defiled his offspring. Because word for verse 1, one man sinned in the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for all of sin. We have the DNA of Adam, a defiled DNA. We were born that way. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 5, in verse number 3, he begot a son in his own likeness after his image. And called his name Satan. Son, daughter, if you've got struggles, it may be because in a seed form your mom and me have those same struggles. You can have victory over them, even in areas that we might not have victory over them. If you run to the Lord with your problems. It's no excuse that you were made after our image, after our likeness, but it's a reality. I look at, at, uh, at y'all's 50th, I look at pictures of you when you were a young man, and look at pictures of Steve 
as he is an old man, not old yet, but I look at him and I say, they look so much alike. Did they not? After the image of his father, physically, and can I say, those images, they got the, your children to some degree have the same temperament you have. They're all different, but you can look at their lives and you can probably find Miss Pat, you probably find that that flaw, that's one that Jerry has. Because I know you don't have any. So, so uh, Brother Jerry looked at her and said, that's what I have. Brother Jerry said, so Spirit did never say Miss Pat had any flaw. But now, seriously, <laughs> seriously, you can look at it and you start looking you say, I know where that struggle came from. I know where that flaw came from. That came from my side of it. My family's like that. I came from her side of the family. Her family's like that. That is not to give you an excuse to say, well, it's my, their mama's fault. I think I'm going to sue mom and daddy because I was born and now and they didn't take, and, and, uh, they gave, gave me these flaws. Oh, no. That's just reality of life. We were made after the image of our parents. It's a natural thing. It's full of self satisfying sinfulness. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. And these are things that defile the man. They're there. That is our natural condition. Our natural condition. We're born to form, we're born to file. When God teaches in Proverbs 4.23 to keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. He's not telling us only to protect our heart from the outward influences. But to protect our heart from what it is in its own self. In me that is in my flesh, Paul says, well, it's no good thing. And here's the same man that said that when he was raised, According to the law, he was blameless. He did not watch the wrong things. He did not hear the wrong things. He was in Saturday school, Sabbath school, every Sabbath day. He grew up, he was circumcised the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin, and he grew up the Hebrew. According to the uh, according to the Pharisee of the strictest sect of the Jews. He did it all right. And yet he said, in me there's no good thing in my flesh. I've got a natural heart. That's a natural condition. Most people want to say most people are, well, people are naturally good. That's why people don't want to go to Bible preaching. Bible preaching says people are naturally wicked. Selfish. Self-centered. Society has made us less self-centered in some areas and more self-centered in other areas. But there's something that entices us because it's already in us. Let no man say when he's tempted, I have tempted God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt every man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and entice. Natural condition. He didn't just want us to protect our heart from outward influences, but, but mainly remind us to keep our heart in check from the inward selfish influence that it normally has. That's man's natural condition. And then we find man's normal traditions. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat. Traditions, rules, regulations, law, they're all made for two reasons by men. Two reasons. Start now. And those two reasons are, number one, to constrain righteousness. 